Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 8 of our Raspberry Pi video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about running Selenium automated test with Raspberry Pi. And I have split this video into two parts, part A and part B, since the concept of running Selenium automation on Raspberry Pi is going to be too extended. Alright, so before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 7 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Selenium in Raspberry Pi and why? Well, Selenium is a famous browser automation testing tool and much powerful than any automation testing tools available in the market. And if you want to learn about Selenium in Exit Automation channel, we have a lot and lot of videos available on Selenium with C Sharp, Selenium with Java, and also in a Udemy course of Exit Automation, we have exclusive framework development course in Selenium that you can see from here on the Udemy, we have a automation framework development with Selenium C Sharp. This course is exclusively developed for creating a framework on Selenium. At the same time, there are a lot of videos available on our Execute Automation channel for Selenium, like Selenium Automation with C Sharp, Selenium Automation Framework Development with uh, Java, Selenium Tidbits, and so many things. All right. So we are not going to really drill down into Selenium basics and do things like that. Rather, our focus is mainly on running the Selenium automation test on Raspberry Pi. So we can use Raspberry Pi to work as a remote Linux machine to run our Selenium automation test case in it. So how to achieve this? Well, Selenium Grid is the answer. Selenium Grid allows us to scale by distributing tests on several machines to run the test even parallelly. Selenium Grid also manages multiple environments from a central point, making it easy to run the tests against a vast combination of browsers and operating systems. That's what is required. So we can scale our test, not just limiting it into just one single machine. Rather, we can run in multiple machines, but we don't really require a lot of hardware for that. We can have at least five or six different Raspberry Pis and then we can run the test in them. If you really think that you need to run that in a physical machine rather than running in a virtual machine environment. So you can use a affordable Raspberry Pi to perform the operation. But this is not a case in many different companies right now because Raspberry Pi is not very much acclaimed usage in many of the companies. But still you can use this concept to perform the operation of running your test on a Linux operating systems instead of really creating a virtual machine and performing the operation. Selenium Grid minimizes the maintenance time for Grid by allowing you to implement custom hooks to leverage virtual infrastructure for instance. In our case, it's a Raspberry Pi, right? So what are the prerequisites we should have in our Ubuntu Mate of Raspberry Pi? So we have installed Ubuntu Mate 16.04 in our Raspberry Pi. So what are the software prerequisites that is required for our Selenium automation? So the first thing we need is Java. We need to have at least the latest version of Java installed in our uh, Raspberry Pi that we can do using apt-get. And then we need to have Selenium jar file that will spin up the node of our Selenium to connect our Selenium hub server which is running in any of our machine. And then we also need to have a Firefox browser. But even the Mate operating system has the Firefox browser out of the box so we don't really have to care about that. And finally, we require something called XVFB. Well, what is XVFB? XVFB, or otherwise called as the X Virtual Frame Buffer, is a display server implementing the X11 display server protocol. In contrast to other display servers, XVFB performs all graphical operations in memory without showing any screen outputs. It's more like running a graphical operation in a headless environment where you really don't need to have your Raspberry Pi connected into your monitor or TV, something like that. So you can run your test even without having a display device connected to your Raspberry Pi. We will actually come to this XVFB concept while we start running the test while we're writing the automated test in Eclipse of Java. Let's quickly do this in action and see how things works. So for that, I'm gonna flip to our putty. So I'm gonna connect to my Raspberry Pi so I know the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, so I'm just going to uh, connect it right now. And I'm going to log in as user KK, and the password is admin. So let's start installing Selenium, Java, and XVFB one by one. So for installing that, I'm gonna use the command sudo apt-get install default jre. 
I just require Java runtime environment instead of JDK. I just want to execute the uh, jar file. So JRE is more than enough for me. So I'm just going to hit enter and you can see that it is reading the package and is also calculating how many uh, memory is required for installing that. And you can see that it is installing the package and it's pretty much good to go. So right now we have the Java almost ready. If you see Java hyphen version, it will show you what is the version of the Java that we have installed. We have installed the open JDK of 1.8, which is pretty much close to new version, which is great. And now I'm just going to clear the terminal. And then once the JDK is installed, the next thing we need to do is to download the jar file in our Raspberry Pi, which is nothing but our Selenium server jar file. So the Selenium server jar file is actually available right here in Selenium HQ website. You can see there is something called Selenium standalone server. So you can download the latest version of Selenium server in your Raspberry Pi. So for downloading that, we just need to copy this URL or the link. And then I'm going to open the Chrome browser and I'm going to paste this uh, link here and I'm going to hit enter. So this will actually download the selenium jar file in your local machine but as you can see there is a url here which is what i really require so i'm just going to copy this link address and then i'm going to go over to my terminal of putty and then i'm going to use something called wget here so before going there let me create a folder called selenium and then if you see right now we have a folder called selenium here so I'm going to navigate to the Selenium folder. I'm going to use something called sudo wget. And within this wget, I'm going to paste the URL that I just copied from the Chrome browser. And I'm going to hit enter. So this way you can see that it will download the jar file in the Selenium folder that we just created. So we will just wait for some time to download this jar file. All right, now it seems like our jar file is downloaded. And now if I do ls, you can see that we have our jar file available, right? So now I can easily run our Selenium server using this particular jar file. The last package which I need to install right now is the XVFP. So how to do that? It's very, very simple. All I have to do is sudo apt-get install XVFP and hit enter. It seems like I have already installed this XPFB and the newest version is already available. So there is no problem. That's it. So now our environment for running the Selenium automation test in Raspberry Pi is almost ready. The next thing is we need to write the code in our Windows 10 Eclipse. And then I'm going to trigger the Selenium's test in the Raspberry Pi environment. So in the next video, we will try to run our test in our Raspberry Pi. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.